Welcome to Harvesting Clouds, where we take a practical approach to learning and leveraging clouds. This is the second and the last part of the video series where we are checking out 10 different ways to move the data to Azure Storage Account. If you haven't checked the first part yet, you can do so by clicking on the link in the top right corner. Also stick around till the end and I'll show you a quick tip how you can find out which method will work best for your scenario without memorizing all these ways. So let's get started right from where we left in the previous video. The next couple of ways we are going to talk about are programmatic in nature. Where would you use this? Let's say you are building an application and within that application, the end users, they are uploading some files like some PDF files or images and you need to store them somewhere. So Azure storage account is the place where you are going to store those images or those PDF files. And how are you going to develop that application? You are going to do that with the help of the REST API provided by Azure storage accounts. The reference of this is available here. The link of this I will be providing in the description below as well. In this particular API reference, we are not going into the details of this, but one thing that you should notice that under the blob service, you have the description regarding how you are going to upload up to 256 MB of data and how are you going to upload more than that particular size limit. So if you click on the put blob, it will take you to the API reference of this particular put blob where you have the HTTP, the URI for the method request for uploading the files to Azure storage account. I'll not go into the details of this. If you want me to go into the details of this, let me know in the comment below and we can look at building a sample in a subsequent video. Now, similar to this, the other way of moving the data that is also programmatic is leveraging Azure PowerShell or using Azure CLI. CLI is cross-platform. Now Azure PowerShell core is as well. So you can leverage any one of those based on your preferences. So this particular script that I have written here, what we are doing here is leveraging Azure PowerShell. We are logging into the Azure portal and then selecting the right subscription, setting some parameters, and then we are setting the context. That is, we are setting the context to the appropriate storage account. If you are leveraging something called storage account keys or SAS tokens, then you do not even need to log in. You can directly use those keys, use those SAS tokens and can connect to that particular storage account. And then finally, you provide where your file is that you are going to upload and leveraging the command call set az storage blob content, you can upload the files. And then leveraging another commandlet called get az storage blob content, you can download the files. If you do not want to deal with scripts, you can skip this particular portion. But if you want to automate some tasks, for example, you need to copy over some CSV file containing some reports into Azure storage account so that your SLAs are fulfilled, you can do so by creating a very simple script. I'll be providing the link to this particular script from my GitHub repo in the description below. Now let's switch gears. Let's talk about a unknown way, very less known way to copy over the data. You would not think of this next particular way as the moving of data to Azure storage account. And that way is leveraging Azure Data Factory. Azure Data Factory is Microsoft's ETL solution. That is, you extract the data, you transform the data within the data factory, and then you load the data. Primarily, this is used to copy over the data from on-premises, from other cloud data stores, and then massage the data. That is, transform into a different format, and then copy it over into your SQL databases, your SSIS databases. But if you notice here, this is this image is from Microsoft Azure Data Factory uh, product page. There is also mention of Azure files. That means you can primarily use Azure Data Factory by massaging the data, by making some changes to the files if you need to do that, and then copy those over to Azure files. That is your Azure file shares. So this is also a tool that can be leveraged as a data move tool from your on-premises data to Azure files. Now let's talk about the next way of moving the data. For that, we have to switch 
back to the Azure portal. The service that we are interested in is called Azure File Sync. To create the new service for Azure File Sync, you just need to search for File Sync, click on this particular solution from Marketplace, provide the resource group name, the subscription, a name for the sync service, provide a geographical region where you want to deploy this service. This should be closer to your physical location. And then finally review and create the service. Now I have already done that and I have a storage sync service. I'll click on this to navigate to this particular service. Now why would you need this? What is this service doing? With Azure files, you have an SMB storage that can be mounted directly onto the servers on premises. Now you can access that particular SMB share just like you would any network SMB share and then start copying over the data but you can go one step further. You can leverage this service to provide continuous sync and site local caching option, wherein one server on-premises can act as a caching server. You get the advantage of on-premises file server. You get the high flexibility, high performance, high compatibility, where all your applications that were working with that on-premises file share will keep on working. But with this particular service, that on-premises file share can be copied over continuously, leveraging the file sync service into Azure. You can move up to 100 terabytes of capacity per Azure file share. You can perform multi-site sync to multiple servers on-premises. To do that, this is two-step process. You register the on-premises server by clicking on register servers and then downloading this Azure File Sync agent and then configuring it appropriately. It will start showing up here once you have done that. Now, the on-premises server is configured. You can configure one or multiple servers, but once those servers are configured, you need to point them to which Azure file share in the Azure portal you want to use. To do that, you do something called creation of sync groups. With the sync group, you simply point that from this particular registered server, the data should go to this particular Azure file share. So if you want me to delve deep, you want to see this in action, let me know in the comments below and I can explore this service. Now the next way is going to leverage on-premises physical or virtual devices. Let's see what those ways are. Most of the offerings that we are going to talk about next to move the data are clubbed under Microsoft's data box offerings. Now these offerings, they deal with huge amounts of data, terabytes and terabytes of data. Now let's see which of these are online options and which are offline options and how they help us in moving large amounts of data. Now in here, I have all the data offerings in one image. This is from Microsoft's product page. On the left-hand side, I have the data that I want to move. The data could be on-premises or on the move. For example, in IoT devices related to my uh, office. And on the right-hand side is the Microsoft Azure where I want to move this particular data. Now let's look at these offerings one by one. The first of these offering is called Data Box Gateway. Now this is a virtual device. This is a virtual network device sitting in your hypervisor. You can download this from Azure portal and then can configure in your on-premises network on a hypervisor. It provides you with a local cache based fast and low bandwidth usage transfer to Azure portal over SMB or NFS protocol. So your data basically goes from your on-premises to the data box gateway, which is your local virtual device. And then from here over the internet, the data goes into Azure. Now, similar to this particular service, there is another service called Azure Stack Edge. Now the difference is this is an on-premises physical device. This is a Microsoft physical network device. It also supports SMB or NFS. It is edge compute process data in local cache and it provides you with the similar fast low bandwidth usage transfer to Azure. So basically in the same sense, your data from on-premises, it goes to this particular, your local physical device. Earlier this used to be called as Azure Data Box Edge. 
Microsoft rebranded this as Azure Stack Edge. And then from here, the data will go over the internet into your Azure storage. Now these are on-premises options. These two are the online options. These provide you with continuous data sync. Now what are the offline options? Let's say you have one time 100 terabytes of data and you want to copy that into the Azure data center. You do not want to clog your network. You do not want to use the network bandwidth. What are the options that you have? So the options that you have are the data box related disk options. You have data box disk, which is eight terabyte SSD with a USB and SATA interface. It has 128 bit of encryption and it comes in a pack of five. So five times eight, it totals up to 40 terabytes of data. But if that is not sufficient, you can upgrade to Databox. Databox is a rugged device with 100 terabytes of capacity. It comes with AES 256-bit encryption that provides you with a peace of mind for safer transit. If you have even more data that you want to navigate, that you want to transfer to Azure, then Databox Heavy is the option that you want to use. It can be designed and can provide you with up to one petabyte of data that you can move to cloud with this particular service. One more related service is called Azure Import Export Service. And the way it differs from the data box related offline offering is this particular service, with this particular service, you can leverage your own disks and then encrypt the data and then send your own disks instead of ordering the disks from Microsoft leverage the disks that you already have, encrypt the data on those, and then send those to Microsoft and they will hook up the disks with their data center, copy over the data for you, and then you will have the data in Microsoft Azure. So that's the only difference, but it also falls under the same category. That is, you get some disks, you copy over the data, and then in an offline manner, you ship the disks to Microsoft. As the data is encrypted, you have peace of mind, and then Microsoft copies over the data into their data center. That way you get the data in Microsoft Azure. Now let's switch gears back to the Azure portal. The last thing we are going to see is these two services, Databox Gateway and Azure Stack Edge. Where are these services? Here I'm back in the Azure portal. To get started with these Databox related services, I'll search for Databox in the top search bar. So the two services that I'm interested in are the Databox itself and Azure Stack Edge slash Databox Gateway. Let's look at the second service first. In here, I don't have any Azure Stack Edge or Databox Gateway servers, so I can click on this button to get started. I can select the subscription, then a geographical region closest to me, and then under ship to a country closest to me. And then click on apply. It gives me the option to go through the wizard to set up Azure Databox Gateway. It does say that this is a virtual device that will help you send the data in and out of Azure. If you want me to delve deep into this particular topic, let me know in the comments below and I can do a separate video on this. For now, let's switch back to the search box and search again for Databox and look at the other service. So here, there are no Databoxes. Databox is the other option that we discussed for offline moving of the data. So you click on Create Data Box to get started. Select a resource group. I'll select a dummy resource group. Select the transfer type you want to import to Azure. You select the source, country, or region from where you are sending the data, and then the destination region where you will be importing the data. Hit apply, and it will give you all these options. It gives you the option of data box disk. And we, as we discussed that this is up to five disks per order. And each of this disk is an SSD with USB or SATA interface. And it gives you with 40 terabyte of total capacity out of which 35 terabyte is the usable capacity. Similarly, if you have the need for more data, you can leverage Databox, which goes up to 1000 terabyte, and Databox Heavy goes up to 1, 
uh, sorry, data box goes up to 100 terabyte and data box heavy goes up to 1000 terabytes. You can also send your own disks. Earlier, this was called as import export service. Now this is clubbed directly into the Azure data box wizard. And then you can select on any of the option. For the first three options, the select button is disabled because this service is only available for enterprise agreement customers, that is EA customers, CSP, Microsoft Partner Network uh, customers, and sponsorship offer type subscriptions. My subscription does not fall under any of these categories. That's why I do not see the select option in here. I can only select the option where I can send my own disks and I can send up to 10 disks per order by selecting this particular option. Now, before I can conclude, if you recall, I mentioned that I'll be giving you with one tip through which you will be able to determine which of all these options will work best in your scenario to move your data to Microsoft Azure. Now to do that, to explore that tip, navigate back to the home page and navigate to your storage account. Now in here, you have the option for data transfer. So here, select the estimated data size that you are going to transfer to Azure. If your data size is not available, select the one that is closest to it. Select the closest available network bandwidth based on your network bandwidth and then select the transfer frequency, whether you are going to transfer repeatedly, continuously, or you are only going to make the transfer once. And then it will give you all the options that are relevant to you. As you can see, it says it is showing five results right now. If you click on browse all solutions twice, it will show you all the solutions. Now you can see that it shows more solutions than what we covered, but actually that is not the case. We clubbed the categories, for example, Azure PowerShell, Azure CLI into one, based on what makes sense when you are practically transferring the data. You will not use both of these options. These are both very similar, doing the same thing in two different ways. So we clubbed those two together and we looked only at Azure PowerShell. So this concludes this particular video that is looking at how we can move the data in different ways from on-premises into Azure, either once or in a continuous fashion. I know this has been like drinking from a fire hose. It has been a lot of knowledge, a lot of different ways that we explored in these videos. If you think that I skipped through a particular section or particular way and you want me to cover that in depth, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to cover that in one of the subsequent videos. Please do subscri subscribe and support this channel. Do hit that bell icon to get notified of the new content. And like this video if you like the content. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one.